Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our latest FSB national webinar, which are designed to help you in the various aspects of your business. Uh, my name is Sam Holiday. I'm one of the FSB's development manager. And I just I cover the Gloucestershire, Bristol and Bath area. But we know we've got people from all over the country here today. So you're all extremely welcome. And um, just to let you know about the format of how, what we're doing today. Um, you, if you've been on an FSB networking event before, you may be thinking, well, I'll put all my details in the chat. But we've got the chat um, um, uh, uh, cut off. And the reason for that is because we like people to be able to enjoy the presentation and actually see what's going on. And sometimes the chat can be a bit distracting. So we kept the chat off. But what we are looking for is your questions. So in a little while, Lushi will go through a presentation, which I've seen. It's, it's excellent. And we'd love to have your questions about the things she's talking about or other issues to do with trading um, with Amazon. So um, look at the bottom. You'll see the Q&A section. Put any questions that you want into there. And then we'll feed them at the end um, to us because we're, we're going to have quite a lot of time, hopefully, for questions, which is, I know, a very important part of these webinars. Um, to answer two questions you might have immediately, um, if you can't stay for the whole hour or you know people that would have liked to have seen this but uh, have missed it, then don't worry. This will be going on our FSB website on the FSB on demand site and it'll be up for 120 days. So it'll probably be up from tomorrow, which will be April the 20th, I think it is, uh, and then it'll be there for, for sort of three months. So if you missed today or you know people that would benefit from seeing it, then please go on to that website. And you also see so many other great um, uh, webinars, by the way, all aspects of business. Um, the second question that people often ask is, will we get to see the slides? And the answer is yes. If you registered for today, if you're here or if you if you registered but weren't able to join us, we'll be sending the slides out again, probably tomorrow or maybe later today. So you don't need to be scrambling, writing down everything that you can see on the screen. You'll get a copy of it. Um, just as our usual um, mention for the FSB, if, if you are a member, Excellent. Well done. You're part of the biggest and best business group in the country. So well done. If you're not, then we always would love to hear from you. So just go onto the FSB website or contact people like myself and we'll be happy to put you in contact with people that can tell you all about the benefits of being a member. So today um, we've got a great presentation here. Um, Usha has worked with Amazon for a, a number of years and she'll tell you all about that in a little while. But how do you get on to Amazon? What's it going to cost you to be there? What sort of return can you expect? Um, you, you may already be working with Amazon. Are you getting the best return for it? You may have never worked with Amazon, but you, you really want to see what the costs and fees are involved. And it's it's quite an eye opening thing, I think. But so, so many small businesses are actively involved with Amazon. So if you're not there, even if you're a traditional retailer, you think I should be with Amazon, then you should be because your competitors are. So I'm going to invite you in a little while just to sort of go through a presentation. Um, she'll be speaking for um, anything up to half an hour, which is fantastic. But we'll leave us plenty of time at the end for questions. So you've seen the Q&A box at the bottom. Put your questions in there and then I'll ask them on your behalf um, at the end. So without further ado, um, thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. We know it's every hour is precious. Um, so we do appreciate it. So I will uh, fade into the background. Usha will take over and the presentation will begin. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So here we are, Wednesday, the 19th of April, um, a day that I certainly have been looking forward to for quite some time. It's absolutely fantastic to be here, to be collaborating with the FSB and to be sharing our six and a half years of selling on Amazon journey with you. Um, it's been a, a painful journey for us at the very beginning um, and we've grown as Amazon has grown and as our own business has grown as well. So today we're going to be looking at uh, the costs and fees and we're starting off with uh, why did I capture those two elements as costs and fees? Well, the costs are primarily what it's going to cost you to sell on Amazon and um, the fees are what Amazon are going to be charging you. So putting both of those together will give you an idea in relation to what the overall cost is, whether you can make a profit, whether you can gain a return on your investment, um, et cetera. We'll also be looking at the minimum product price because absolutely, that is absolutely invaluable to in order, um, in order to ensure you do get a profit because you really want to be working towards getting something from Amazon 
um, irrelevant of which stage you're at. So we'll um, we'll crack on um, and um, really get started on this. So what I'm going to do as a starting point is share my screen and we will we're, we're on the road. We are now on the road. Okay, so everybody should be able to see my screen. The title I've just covered um, in relation to selling on Amazon costs and fees. And we'll go straight on to the next slide. So here we go. Who are AMZ Train? We are based just outside of Coventry. We've been selling on Amazon for six and a half years. We also sell on eBay. We sell through Shopify. And we either work with manufacturers here in the UK. So we have products on Amazon in um, based uh, from, we we'll work well from manufacturers in the UK. And we also import goods as well, where the costs are just that little bit too steep for us to, to sell on Amazon and the other platforms. So we have experience of um, importing and selling and working with manufacturers here in the UK in a nutshell. Um, AMZ Train was born a couple of years ago um, because we were asked by a local business advisor to um, help other bricks and mortar businesses to sell online and AMZ Train was born as a result of that. Now, because we are very, very passionate about Amazon, it's given, most definitely given us a life that is very different to being salaried and having an employer, etc. Um, we continue with AMZ Train because quite simply the knowledge that's out there at the moment is not always up to date or accurate and and we base all of our knowledge on our own experiences so that says we support startups small businesses large organizations corporates um, second income earners and we offer training individual consultations one-to-one -one, two-to-one one-to-two and we deliver workshops as well both online and face-to-face -face. so that's us amz train so the focus of today is primarily what Amazon will charge you for selling on their platform. Incidentally, um, coming from an IT background, if there's any grammar or words that we use that um, or, or are used today that you're not too familiar with, then please um, do, do shout out or keep those uh, areas to the end. And I will try and change wording as I go along. So, for example, what Amazon will charge you for selling on their platform a platform quite simply is their website. So, okay, we're going to be covering um, how to manage those costs, how to reduce those costs, subscription costs, and a whole host of other costs as well. Here we go. Okay, to sell on Amazon, you need a seller account. So most of us have a purchasing account on Amazon. So you do need to invest in a seller account. In order to gain a seller account, as Sam touched on earlier, we you need to be verified. So Amazon will ask for your ID. They will ask for utility bills. They will ask for bank statements. You do not need to have a, um, a company uh, bank account, a business bank account. Um, but Amazon will cover all of that with you. And the information is most definitely out there in order to um become verified and be able to sell on Amazon. It can just take, it can take a couple of days to get an account set up. The one decision you are going to have to make is whether you're going to choose an individual selling plan or a professional selling plan. So based on the fact there are two different plans, the individual plan simply means that you can sell up to 35 items per month and it will cost you 0.75 pence to sell your item on Amazon, um, plus additional fees, which we will be covering shortly. So you're not paying for a monthly subscription. And it's great if you want to test the water to see if Amazon is for you. It, in addition to that, you have the professional plan. So there are only two plans that costs £25 per month. And you can sell as many items as you want. And there are greater benefits as well. So you can see that uh, on this screenshot here, you can advertise your own products. You can um, qualify to be placed in a different area of the Amazon screen if need be. Um, and you just uh, gain more access, um, et cetera. So if you were really, really serious about being a professional seller, you want to sell lots and lots on Amazon, then maybe start with a professional 
account. If, however, you're thinking, oh, I'm not too sure yet whether Amazon will work for me. I don't understand the fees. I don't quite know what's involved. Then possibly opt for an individual account uh, where you're only paying for the items that are sold and then upgrade to a professional account. So everything that you have can be upgraded to a professional account. That means you retain your reviews and your selling history, all your reports are there, et cetera. And there are no charges to upgrade. So that's kind of it in relation to the very, very basics, the monthly subscription. That's what it's going to cost you to, to sell on Amazon, excluding the fees for your product and your listing, which we are going to go on to straight away. So there are a couple of methods to selling on Amazon. There are many methods in all honesty, but in this presentation, we're only going to be covering two, which is Fulfill by Merchant, acronym FBM, and Fulfill by Amazon, acronym FBA. We are FBA, so that simply means that everything that we sell is stored in the Amazon warehouses. Uh, Amazon call them distribution centers, so we send our goods into Amazon, and they um, sell, um, they package and post our goods for us. We did try FBM, it just wasn't for us. The thought of queuing up at the post office, getting your goods um, to the, uh, the post office counter clerk, or having um, the Royal Mail come and collect the goods from us at home at a time that suited them, it just wasn't working for us. So FBA works for us. Now, both of those two models, whether you opt for fulfill by merchant, being yourself, you post, or fulfilled by Amazon, do incur a referral fee. So a referral fee is also known as a listing fee. Simply, that means that when your products sell on Amazon, you will be charged to have your products displayed on Amazon. So the referral fee uh, applies to both FBM and FBA. And then I'll put a little note on there saying the FBA incurs a transaction fee as well, storage fees and other fees, which we will go through shortly. So, so far, we have the subscription fee that you pay per month. Um, and we've just touched on the referral fee, which we're going to expand on now. So the referral fee is charged to your business and it's dependent on the category that your product is placed in. For example, if you were selling in the fashion category, then you will be charged a different amount to um, if you were, for example, if you were selling in, in the baby sector or the book sector or something along those lines. And we'll, we, we'll have a couple of slides on categories in a moment. We do remember that all of these charges do have a VAT element as well. So do build the VAT onto any of the costs that we're going to be going through today. So the referral fee is a fee to have your product displayed on Amazon. It depends on which category your product falls into, different categories, different fees. You only pay when your item is sold and Amazon charge the VAT on referral fees. Capture the, the most basic information onto this PowerPoint slide, which will be, um, the whole slides will be sent over um, to yourselves tomorrow. Product categories. So if, for example, you have decided to sell backpacks and handbags, so we're looking at about the first, second, third, fourth, fifth item down, selling backpacks and handbags just to have your item displayed on Amazon will cost you 15.30% plus VAT. Now, if you decide to sell books a little bit further down, you can see that charges are 5.1% up to a value of five pounds, and then the costs increase to 15.3%. So the referral fee, just a reminder, is to list your products on Amazon and you pay when the product sells. No sale, no referral fee, it's quite simple. You just pay the subscription fees that we mentioned earlier. So it's, it's very important that you do find yourselves um, in the right category. Amazon have a habit um, of placing products in different categories. And the first you know about it is when you check your stock, you look at your inventory and you think, hang on a minute, I didn't sign up to be in the fashion category. I had signed up to be in the handbags and, and, and bags uh, category because moving categories as Amazon do do, 
uh, means that your fees could increase dependent on the category that Amazon have placed you in. So you must keep an eye on the category that Amazon um, have placed you in. Initially, you decide the category. If they move you, keep an eye on that. Um, we do have another two slides on categories. Um, so clothing and, and accessories, once again, you can see it's 15.3%. The average is basically 15.3% um, to sell in any particular category, in, in many categories, um, plus VAT. So we our products, we sell in a number of different categories, and most of ours are actually 15.3% as well. Um, however, if you decide to sell and um, cycling accessories, you can see that the um, referral fee there is 8.16% plus VAT. The third column being the minimum, if for any chance your product was selling for less than the referral fee was less than 25 um, pence, then Amazon will charge you as minimum of 25 pence plus VAT. Um, so, so that's uh, slide number two. Then we've got another one on categories um, as well. So for example, appliances, they have a lower referral fee. Groceries have a lower referral fee. Um, jewelry has a higher referral fee, second from the bottom there. 20.4% um, for jewelry, because simply because Amazon believe there is a greater profit to be made in um, jewelry. So they do charge you that little bit more. So as a starting point, when you put your product cost sheet together, you do need to capture the referral fees that apply to your product. OK, so that's um, a couple of slides on referral fees um, are based on the category that your product is placed in. And that said, you choose your category as a starting point. Amazon did not move us out of our original category um, until five years later. Then we found out we were in a different category. In fact, they actually moved us into the fashion category, which had a higher percentage of referral fee. And it was only when we went through our reports, we said, wait a minute, we shouldn't be in that category. Um, presented our case to Amazon and they placed us back in the category with a lower fee that we should we wanted to be in. Categories are important because that's um, when customers are searching for your products, they may decide to search based on category. So it's very, very important that you do get the right category as a starting point. OK, so that's the referral fee. Let's talk FBA. So FBA, um, Amazon state that in the UK, more than 50 percent of sellers are private um, organisations like us. Um, so based on that alone and recognising that Amazon also sell on their own platform, you never want to compete with Amazon. They have more power, they have more money, I guess, than yourselves. So you do not want to be selling a product that Amazon sell themselves. Just be very mindful of that. So based on your goods being stored in the Amazon warehouses, Amazon will deal with all customer um, communication. They will package your goods and they will ship your goods, uh, ship, post your goods to customers using the FBA model. So that simply means fulfilled by Amazon. Now, we all know that the price of a postage stamp increased earlier on this year. So a first class is a first class large is one pound sixty and a first class, uh, sorry, second class large is one pound fifteen. So when you are looking at the costs of postage, you're looking at jiffy bags, you're looking at any compliment slips, et cetera. You may want to compare those prices to FBA and let Amazon store those goods and ship those goods for you. The other benefit of FBA is that you don't have products stored at your house. Initially, you have them delivered to your home, um, and so you can inspect those goods before you ship them to Amazon. So um, you have them stored in the Amazon warehouses, and they're quite safe there, and Amazon manage everything for you on that basis. Now, FBA, what will it cost you to have Amazon packaging your goods, posting your goods, and dealing with the customer communication as well? We have, um, I put together this um, this slide, which quite simply is a screenshot of a rate card. If you were to, uh, if you wanted to identify the cost to sell on Amazon, including all of the fees that I've mentioned so far and the additional fees that I will be mentioning shortly, Google Amazon rate card. It's very, very simple. It's free. You do not need an account to get this information. 
but it'll give you an idea of what it will cost to use FBA and FBM if that's what you choose to do in relation to your product. So, for example, under um, a small envelope, dimensions of 20 by 15 by one centimeter. And I have a little example here. It's just a little notebook that I have uh, been uh, measuring around that size. If my product is around this size and it weighs less than 80 grams, it will cost me £1.71 plus VAT to have Amazon post package and ship that product for me. Post and ship being the same thing. Amazon being American, they, they use words like inventory instead of stock, ship instead of post, etc. So anything less than this size or equal to this size, £1.71, providing the weight is less than 80 grams. So, so far, putting the subscription fee aside, you have the referral fee, which is listing your products on Amazon, and then you have the transaction fee as well. Um, just, just one example, if your product falls into like an A4 pucker pad size, so I class this as a standard envelope, dimensions 33 by 223 times 2.5 because it's a little bit thicker that you can get quite a few products in there so if it falls into that size and it weighs less than 60 grams it will cost you one pound 81 plus VAT and thereon if it's up to 210 grams but higher than 60 it'll cost you one pound 98 plus VAT etc and this list goes on there are several pages to this depending on the dimensions of the product that you wish to sell now a couple of months ago um going back to going back to february it was the whole rates card business and identifying what it was going to cost on amazon was very very easy very very easy very straightforward and we were advising all of our clients and workshop um, delegates to not be put off by size and weight for example if you wanted to sell an ironing board on Amazon, then it wasn't going to cost you a lot more than it was going to cost to sell something in a small envelope. And so the packaging was different, et cetera. And um, it, we were saying, just go for it. Seriously, seriously, think about it because the profit margins could be higher for the larger value items. There are many, many furniture sellers on Amazon um, and they obviously benefit um, in relation to the larger items. So that is simply is just one of the um, screenshots from the rate card that Amazon have um, displayed and is accessible to everybody. And you can clearly see that we have the standard envelope, my little highlighter on. We've got the, um, the small envelope, we've got standard envelope, large envelope. Now, what I really wanted to flag here was at the beginning of March, around the 7th of March, Amazon made some changes. So anything of a 35 by 25 by 12 centimeter small parcel size has a new caveat and it's based on something called the dimensional weight. This is pretty new. Many sellers are not aware of this at the moment. And how I became aware is that every single day we are logged into Amazon. I was on the Amazon app. I caught up with the news and I could see that the dimensional weight, which is over here, had increased. And as a result of which things were going to be changing. And I have a slide on that. And it's actually, I think it's incredibly important. It has caught some sellers out um, and it will affect your profit margin. So dimensional weight are the two key words here. And we're going to be looking at those now. As of the 1st of March, dimensional weight, Amazon didn't send an email to say they were changing the fees for these larger items, which is quite typical of Amazon style and comms, et cetera. But they, um, I caught it on the news. So dimensional weight quite simply means, now sometimes I think you need to be a mathematician to understand Amazon's um, uh, calculations, et cetera but it applies to the products of the highlighted sizes only. So we're looking at small size, small parcel, standard parcel and above. And it's calculated on the length, the width and the height divided by 5,000. Now the Amazon forums are saying nobody knows where Amazon has um, gained this figure of 5,000. 
but Amazon is a powerhouse. To an extent, they can really do what they want. And if you were to look on the Amazon forums, you will see that there's an absolute uproar in relation to this dimensional weight, because quite simply, the costs have gone up. So that's all we really have time to talk about in relation to dimensional weight. But what I will say um, are to the, on this slide is that if your product will fit into a small envelope, you will be paying £1.71 um, if your product is less than 80 grams. If your product fits into a larger envelope, then you will be paying the standard envelope size. Now, those costs that are those fees displayed here, the 171, the 181, et cetera, are based on your product size, not your envelope size. So it's important to note that. These fees on the right hand side, one pound ninety, two pound sixteen, two pound seventy, et cetera, they're for the other Amazon marketplaces. Um, so for example, they could be for Italy, for France, Germany, et cetera. But you want to concentrate on the very first column, which is the UK um, price and um, move forward in relation to that. Okie dokie. So we spoke about the um, dimensional weight. We do not need to stay on that size, that um, slide anymore. Let's go on to small and light. So small and light is a service that Amazon offer. Your product price must not be more than 10 pounds. Um, and you can make a significant saving if you were to opt for the small and light service. So the small and light simply means that your goods, once again, will be stored at Amazon and they will ship the goods for you, but they will charge a lot less. For example, using my little pointer here, a, stand, a small envelope, less than 80 grams, will cost £1.71 plus VAT. Uh, that's your obviously your FBA fee. Whereas a small envelope under the small and light umbrella will cost you just 86 pence. There is a difference and savings to be made. Now, and the, the thing with small and light is that there's a limit in relation to what you can sell. As I said, we can only go up to um, 10 pounds on a small and light um, through the small and light package that Amazon offer. But you can gain an idea of the products that you can sell. We've got some jewellery here popped into a standard envelope. We've got an extra large envelope for socks, etc. The challenge with small and light, and we have tried small and light, is that where sometimes you make a purchase on Amazon and it's less than a certain amount, Amazon may say, OK, it's wait until those um, you, you either purchase up to 20 pounds worth. And if not, there could be a charge for um, your customers to purchase that product. And it takes a bit longer to deliver. So on the FBA, normal prime customer uh, process, then the goods are normally delivered either the same day or the next day. Small and light can take a little bit longer. That small and light, just a quick whisk through of that for an option for you to consider when selling your products. Don't forget storage fees. So Amazon have two lots of storage fees. So they have fees in the peak season, which is January to September, and there are fees between October to December. And it's based on the size of the products that you sell and how much space you take of um, uh, the Amazon shelving, et cetera. By the way, I'll throw this in. If you've not seen an, a video on the Amazon warehouses and how they store their goods, et cetera, and how they ship goods, it's quite impressive. And those videos are accessible and free um, as well. Um, so don't, like I said, don't forget your storage feeds. So in summary, we have so far, we've spoken about the selling plan at the very beginning, 0.75 plus VAT or £25 per month plus VAT. Um, we've spoken about the referral fee, which is, just to list your products on Amazon, you do not pay until the products sell and it's dependent on your category. There is a fuel and inflation fee, which is 4.3% and that was introduced last year. Fulfillment fees only apply to FBA where your products are actually stored in the Amazon warehouse as an Amazon um, pack um, and ship those products for you. Storage fees, just touched on two different fees, uh, fee structure um, dependent on the time of year. We'll talk about a removal fee in a moment. If you opt for FBA, having your goods stored at the Amazon warehouse, you also need to build into your costs what it's going to cost to get your goods to Amazon. The process is very, very simple, but time-wise here, I will let you know that we tend to send about, I don't know, 50 kg um, every couple of days into Amazon. 
and it doesn't cost us more than £20. So in relation to cost, it's incredibly low, 50 kg, approximately £20, normally about five boxes that we send in. And um, like I said, those those costs are just consumed, but you do need to factor those goods in. And the reason it costs us so little is simply that um, Amazon have a third party um, deal, I suppose, or a partnership um, with a number of different suppliers. And for us, it's UPS. They come along, they pick up the goods and take them and we can track them and find out where they are at any one time. So that is getting your goods to Amazon. Um, Refunds, if a customer is unhappy, Amazon will, even though they have already charged you to sell your goods, they will also make a small charge to manage the refund on your behalf. And that is product specific. The details of that are listed on the Amazon rate card if you wanted to have a look at those. Um, let's talk advertising fees. So Amazon um, do have campaigns, um, which they capture under the marketing umbrella. If your product is in the launch phase, then we suggest that you spend up to, I don't know, 40, maybe 50% of your budget, your marketing budget um, on, on, on selling, on marketing your product. So, and, and you save that little bit extra um, just in case it's needed. So don't basically put all of your money into your marketing budget as a starting point. Take it as a step-by-step -step approach and um, have a look at what your advertising cost of sales, your ACOS is, are you getting a return for that or not? Now, one of the areas that me, we made when we started out six and a half years ago is we quite, quite naively thought that we could list our products on Amazon and they would sell, that we would not need to pay for any campaigns, any marketing, et cetera, on the Amazon platform or even off the Amazon platform. Big, big mistake. Um, it wasn't until we added marketing um, campaigns to um, Amazon, we built those, in, those costs in, we set the campaigns up and our products then flew off the shelves. So we've had to spend time managing our campaigns. And we do say that 30% of your product cost on marketing and campaigns is considered reasonable in relation to selling on Amazon and advertising your product on Amazon. There are other fees, optional fees, disposal, labeling, um, baggaging, bubble wrap, et cetera, taping, but you choose um, to pay those if you want to utilize that service from Amazon. I'll come back to um, campaigns in a moment. Um, very, very basic slide, um, just saying that if it's if you're using the FBA model, then you will be um, charged to ship your goods to Amazon, to store them on Amazon. Um, you will most definitely be paying the referral fee, um, shipping fee to send them out to customers. Marketing applies to both. And there's the stock removal fee. So clearly, if your stock is stored at Amazon, you could pay to have your goods um, retrieved and Amazon will send those goods to you but you don't pay that if you're FBM because though you will be storing your goods elsewhere. Okay, um, this screenshot is a little bit colorful, um, but it's um, an actual PDF that I downloaded um, not too, just a couple of days ago. Um, so this is, um, I base this on a, a monthly, uh, monthly figures, um, our month of March. And you can clearly see that even though I fixated things out on the left hand side, you can clearly see that this is your income, how Amazon um, calculate and break down um, money that's coming uh, as a result of you selling your products. And then on the right hand side, you've got your expenses. So the colorful key at the bottom, what it's going to sell, FBA selling fees, transaction fees, all of the fees that we've just spoken about. Now, I'm very, very mindful of the time, so I'm going to cover very quickly just a couple more slides. Bear with me, Sam and Leslie, I won't be too long. Removal fee. If your products do not sell on Amazon, for whatever reason, the costs are too high, et cetera, then you can ask for your products to be returned to you so you can decide on where else to sell your goods. Um, and this, um, as I said, captured in the presentation will be pinged out to you so um it's it's quite cheap um 35 pence per product you don't pay for postage um so for example if if i was i don't know for i was selling a product around this size which is a, the old um, elastoplast box of bandages it'll cost me um 
35 pence plus VAT to have those goods sent through to me, which is not a lot of money considering that our products are located all over um, the UK in different warehouses, and that's how they do tend to work. And um, how are you going to reduce your selling fees? Look at your packaging, look at your inventory, get the fees down, have a look at the category to ensure Amazon have placed you in the right category. Um, remove your goods. Uh, Amazon charge you if your goods are stored um, for longer than three months because they expect your goods to sell within three months, there's an additional charge. So be mindful of that. Manage your campaigns and consider small and light. Now, mindful of the time, once again, Amazon is a complex world. It's a, a, a very um, deep world and there's so much to learn. And 40 minutes, 35 minutes is just the tip of the iceberg for us. So let's just talk about packaging, um, which this slide here goes to show that if, for example, you are selling these tiny little um, items here, I don't quite know what they are, but they look like something to do with a watch or a mechanical device, you do not need a bag this size. You do not need a piece of cardboard like this. This is like a POS, a point of sale product. You are paying for all of that to sell this very small item. Let's jump over to this little USB thing. Do you really need a case this size to um, sell your products on Amazon? Maybe you want to give that impression, but equally they will charge you, um, Amazon will charge you based on the size of that product. Okie dokie, 11.36. I won't keep you much longer um, and I'm really, really looking forward to your questions. So I'm going to skim through some of these slides. We've already said, ensure that your fees are correct. And how you do that, you ask for Amazon. If your goods are stored at Amazon, you ask them to remeasure your products and confirm that the fees are right. This is a screenshot of some work I was doing a couple of days ago um, because they'd um, measured our products incorrectly and therefore we fell onto the next category of um, pricing. Um, make sure in the correct category, we touched on that a little bit earlier, those three slides that we said it's average of 15.3%, um, jewelries in the 20% bracket, et cetera, and cycling products were a little bit cheaper. And don't forget the marketing. Okay, we'll touch on this now, and it's probably the last couple of comments I'm making relating to the slide, you may be pleased to hear, but marketing um, and the overall costs for your product if, for example, you are selling a product, your retail price is £10. And we've already spoken about a minimum fee of probably um, 79, 80-ish pence for small and light, um, which takes a little bit longer. But let's just work on the referral fee and the transaction fee. So looking at the rate card, you could be spending a couple of pounds, three or four pounds on referral fee and a transaction fee. You then need to build in a percentage of costs for marketing. So if, for example, we say 30%, that's another three pounds. You're already close to seven pounds, and that's not including your product cost. If your product was to cost you two pounds, for example, you've hit nine pounds and you're retaining at 10 pounds, which means that you will be very lucky to get a one pound profit back. So your return on investment is going to be 10%. That's not including your subscription fee and is certainly not including any VAT that you need to pay, whichever scheme you're on. And it's also including your accountancy costs, your labeling and all the work that you're going to do. So our recommendation is that if you are selling a product, do not sell a product less than 15 pounds, ideally 20, because even if your product is the same size, a standard size, then you're not going to be paying any extra for the size, you will be paying extra based on the cost price uh, when you have uh, you, you incur your transaction fee. But 15 to 20 pounds, we suggest as a starting point to ensure you get the best return on investment. I'm very mindful, Sam, that I've dragged this on for about another two or three minutes longer than I should have done. And we've just hit 11.39. So I was going to um, stop for a moment and um, answer some questions if we're ready. That's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for that, Alicia. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I found that absolutely fascinating um, and actually quite scary. And yes, some of the questions are coming in now, but can I just do a, a, a generic one, first of all? Um, Amazon is the biggest company in the world, um, and most of the people um, who deal with it in small business centers may just be one-man band. Are they good to deal with? Are they easy to deal with, or, or is it quite complicated? 
they are very very easy to deal with um equally ebay we sell on ebay as well and we do sell through shopify so um amazon and ebay in relation to customer service and dealing with are very very good it's incredibly easy to sell on ebay anybody who sells on ebay uh, will know that you compare that to selling on amazon and it's incredibly complex so the process with amazon if something is not going as you expect you raise a case and they have up to five days to respond you can either phone them you can email them or you can have a chat with them their customer service is is quite impressive um and when I compared them to eBay, who were also really, really good, um, I think for us, Amazon works better for us. We can sell uh, 100 products on Amazon a day in any particular category. And sometimes we don't even sell a handful on eBay, despite the fact that we have the same uh, marketing um, spend on, on both platforms. So despite all those costs and fees, it's still worth pursuing. Right. Absolutely. Let's have a look at, Absolutely. Have a look at the questions then. Um, pick, pick, send them in, uh, everybody, and we'll try and get through them as we can. Um, some people did try and raise their hands, and uh, I see, but I, we can't see that. So you need to put them in the questions and answer box. So um, we've got a, quite a few initially from um, Jill and Murad. I won't give everybody's full names, but just so you know. Um, uh, Jill's first two couple of questions are both about VAT. Um, is the subscription fee, individual versus professional, VAT-able, as well as all the other fees, and is the referral fee based on the pre-VAT item uh, of price of the item? Yes, um, you must add VAT to these costs. Add your 20% on top of those. Excellent. Right, jolly good. Um, Murad's first question is, if AMZ changes a category, can we override it and recategorize? Yes, you can. We've had to do this. So we would, we uh, one of the categories we're in, we are charged 15.3% for the referral fee plus VAT. Amazon moved us into the fashion category, which was 20%, and we raised a case and we were moved back and right. reimbursed and reimbursed for the goods that we'd sold. So they're, they're quite good. If they things do go missing, if things get lost, then they will reimburse you um, for, for things along those lines. Yeah, I think that's encouraging because I, I, so many small businesses struggle with some of the bigger businesses to get a relationship. But it strikes me that once you get to know them, they're worth dealing with, which is good to know. Um, Lynn's asked a question. Uh, could you list in two categories? Um, Amazon say no. Amazon say no. Now, I suppose it's worth me mentioning here that um, Amazon have very strict terms of service. They call it their TOS. So um, one of the areas that they state in relation to listing in more than cat in one category is most definitely not. However, we do know that there are many, many sellers on Amazon that breach those terms of service now we personally wouldn't do it because amazon brings in um, a, a decent regular income for us now if you were to breach those terms of service you are only allowed officially one account to sell on amazon if they suspend your account they could liquid liquidize your goods and the likelihood of you having another account on amazon is virtually zilch and if you were to look at the forums, you can clearly see that people are having to um, pay lawyers, solicitors and get the legal teams involved in relation to getting their money back from Amazon and also getting their goods back. So the simple answer is no, but people mm. do do it. OK, that's I think that's that's very clear. Um, can you just reiterate, because it, it cropped up, I think um, I saw it when we talked about this last week, and I'm still puzzled as to why Amazon charge more for some um, so I, I, cycling, for example, it was eight uh, percent, and then jewelry was twenty percent. Is it simply because they believe that the margins are greater, and, and therefore you can take the hit, so to speak? Yeah, ab absolutely. That, and, and Sam, that's really it. Really, is as simple as that. Um, because we looked at um, if I yeah, if we, when we looked at um, selling, when we started selling ourselves, we didn't know what product we wanted to sell. We had no idea, but we certainly did not think, OK, they're going to charge a lower percentage in that category. So mm. we will pay um, less. But we chose a category that we understood and we chose a product that we we were happy to sell because we understand the product, which is absolutely key. Mm. So they know that there's greater money in fashion, that there is in probably cycling goods and therefore they charge more. Yeah. Do they ever review those? Do they change or are they? They do. Oh, they, they do. They do. Um I was, it went up from about 15% to 15.3. It must have been towards the middle of last year. Um, and you do get notification to say that the, the charges have changed. Most of the time you get an email as a minimum. Mm. This dimensional weight has just floored so many sellers out there here in the UK. It's just absolutely crazy. Yeah. No, know your numbers. Well, I, I, you're, you're 
your your presentation will have helped that and people can keep the presentation so um about halfway through our questions already so please send some more in and um, murad said can we use fba with our branding absolutely oh yes most definitely so what we um so we are brand registered ourselves um we just didn't have the time to go through that in this presentation but we most definitely are brand registered so we've been to the ipo and we've paid our 180 pounds and um we're brand registered in that particular class if you are brand if your product is branded then the the door is just so open to you and i get very excited about this because you can do so much more from a marketing perspective there is so much more that you can do if your product is branded first of all so nobody can copy your product um, because you could raise a case against them and secondly um, the advertising there are more options for advertising as well Thirdly, another benefit is that you get dedicated support if you are brand registered, because Amazon really, really do do like the brand registered um, items. You have a couple of options. You can either sell what others are selling already, um, and you have to be careful there because you could quite simply be competing on price, or you sell something that is a little bit different and it's branded as well, which means others may try and copy you, but they'll never be able to copy you exactly simply because it's you have the patent for that. Right. And, and, and Murad asked a question. You may have covered this, but just in case we missed it, how often does the, that rate card change? This particular one is effective as of the 7th of April this year. Interestingly, something has changed on that, um, and I need to trawl through this because um, it changed the previous month as well. Not often, normally, for some strange reason, this uh, last two months has changed twice. Okay. Um, Jill, I think they've answered this one. She she was uh, wondering about all the other columns on the rate card, but they're different countries, aren't they? From a British they point are. of view, they are. look at the first Absolutely. column. That's, yep. that's the key one from our point of view. Um, yes. And I, I've come to one that Trevor asked now. Trevor says, are the fees based per item or the total content of the basket of your products? The per I, per product. Per product. Per, per per individual uh, per item. individual item yes absolutely okay. per item uh Murren asks can i change from fba to fm fm fmn and vice versa can you switch yeah. from one to yes you can yes you can you'd have to retrieve your goods from amazon uh, because if you're not selling them via the fba model then they, they're of no use to amazon if they're sitting in their warehouses and of course you're being charged but yes, you can. And you can do um, uh, do it the other way around as well, of course, if you're selling by FBM, then start selling by FBA. Some um, Amazon don't um, specify whether this is um, acceptable or not, but some businesses sell are using both models. So they sell using FBM, they ship themselves, and they also sell using FBA. Um, and many, many, um, many, many suppliers do that. Excellent. And um, Karen said, um, I missed the start. Where do you find the products to sell? before? Um, well, she answers that, Karen. Uh, we will be putting this online on the FSB's on demand website from tomorrow. So if you miss a start, you can pick up some of the items that you might have missed anyway. But um, where do you find the products to sell? A general question, really, about dealing with Amazon. Okay, so um, at the starting point, um, we, we, there's a, there's obviously a process and a cycle that you need to go through. But as the starting point is to identify a product. Um, that you wish to sell so in relation to ideas we do run workshops and we can help with idea generation you then go to the point of idea evaluation is that product worthwhile where else is it being sold you don't just look at amazon you look at ebay you look at shopify you look at um, all the other way, um, platforms that are online the wayfares and whatnot as well um, and you then evaluate that product. Can you make a profit from it? Look at the reviews as well. Um, and um, sometimes it's quite simple to find a product, look at the reviews, products that are not selling very well or have poor reviews. Can you do something different to that product? Do something different, work with your manufacturer, get your updated product online and take it from there. So we tend to encourage all of our customers to work with a product that they have an interest in and that they do a wish to sell and that they understand as well. For example, my husband's keen on photography. So we are always looking at products to sell in that sector. We have two little dogs. We are already in the pet category as well as one of our categories, et cetera. So we do en encourage that. In relation to ideas, it can take you six months. It can take a year, et cetera, to think of a product. But we always say that um, take the leap Think of a product and just go with it. See if this will work for you, because you may never um, 
uh, you may never decide to sell, um, but if you've if you've um, trialed something and it doesn't work, you've not really lost a lot of money and a lot of time. Minimum investment, we say about £500. Right, very helpful. Um, Trevor's asked a question, which you might want to say to the end to answer. How do we learn more from you? So you're obviously enjoying what he's heard so far. He wants to know more, so perhaps he can give some contact details at the end. Uh, Lynn, can you add, can you add Brad Bed packaging for handmade items? Brad, Brad Dead? Brad Dead? I don't, I don't know that. B-I-R-O-A. Unless that's branded, packaging for handmade items. Yes, you can. Most definitely you can. Uh, yes, you can. So, for example, we often see mugs, flasks, etc. And you can personalise as well on Amazon um, and whatnot. So, yes, most definitely you can. Um, Amazon also offer a gift option and for something of a Swan Vestas matchbox size for everybody who remembers the old Swan Vestas. Um, they charge uh, the customer a pound for to place the items in a nice little bag. And they class it as a gift packaging and they give um, us as a seller the money from that, having taken their little cut. Yeah, Lynn just put a point up saying it was branded. I was thinking perhaps it was something like bubble wrap, but Brad Dead was bubble wrap than me. <laughs> uh, Samantha's asked, how do you choose between if you want the individual plan or the professional one? When I try to sign up, it automatically put me in the professional one. Oh, OK. Um, so in that case, Samantha, you would need to contact Amazon, raise a case with them through the help option and ask them to switch you over to the FBM. Um, sorry, not FBM, to the um, individual plan, which is obviously a lot less. Um, and they will do that and refund those fees. But very at the very beginning, when you've gone going through your verification, you will have, um, process, you will be asked which account you want to select. And you have the option of the individual and the professional as well. I only looked at this on Monday, so I know that it's most definitely there. And it could just be um, a step that uh, has been overlooked. Um, but first, I'd contact Amazon, raise that case, and um, get them to switch you over, get your money back, and and take it from there. Excellent. So that's not a big issue, then. That can be done. No, not that's at all. Good. Not at all. Um, Glenn's asked, if your item is a strange shape and the box we use is longer in length and shorter in height, can you send them your dimensions and they will send you a price? And he signs it. Glenn, go fly your kite, which might give a bit of an indication of what Glenn does, unless that's a, <laughs> he's, he's insulting us, I don't think he is. Um, so, um, yeah, different shape, size, can can you get send the dimensions and I'll give you a specific price? Absolutely. Okay, so how you create your, um, how you're listing your products on Amazon, how you actually create that is you enter the dimensions yourself. You enter all of your product details, there's about seven tabs. You enter, you upload your photos and their specifics in relation to the photos as well. So you stress the um, dimensions, the height, the length, um, the depth and the weight as well and then Amazon will calculate the fee for you now I will throw this in here because it's a perfect size um, product that to, to use as an example so we were I we sent in some goods only last week it's a newer product and the goods were around this size so it's um, I don't know if you can see that you've got it's, it's just a room, but we get it yeah it's last boxes that size so I know that is no taller than 2.5 centimetres. Now, what Amazon did when they measured it, they measured the um, depth um, to be around eight centimetres. So they put us in the next category. There's only as I was looking at um, our fees on Monday, um, and then I raised a case and said, no, please remeasure. And we're now in the, uh, they have the right measurements. So you tell Amazon the dimensions, which is the height, the length, the depth, and the weight, and the fee is calculated for you. Yeah, I'm very encouraged that the, that that relationship you can talk to Amazon and they'll respond because we all know dealing with bigger companies this isn't always the case. Uh, Gajinder's yeah. asked, "What happens if the goods are in the warehouse for more than three months?" You just charge a little bit extra. Amazon like um, a nice turnaround um, of your goods, so uh, the fees are actually quite small. Um, Amazon, we certainly haven't covered it in this presentation, but um, you as a seller, you are given a score, so you're scored out of one thousand. And the things like the returns of your products, customers stating that your, your products are not um, as per your description, they're stored in long, it brings your score down. Now, when COVID hit, um, so we have thousands and thousands of products in Amazon warehouses all around the country. We had a message from Amazon, even though we've got quite a high, high score to say that they could not store more than 500 of our items all over the UK. Now, where we have thousands, 500 was an uh, absolutely awful experience to go through. So we were having to send goods in every single day. Now, those with a lower score, 
um, will have uh, received an email saying they can only send 100 items or have 100 items. So you really want to you really want to work with Amazon um, and Amazon want you to sell on their platform quite simply, you know, because there's money in it for them as well. But equally, there's a most definitely a decent profit to be made by selling on Amazon. Excellent. And um, uh, Glenn's assured us that he, it is a genuine kite business. So if you're on a kite, go to go fly your kite. That's what I say. Uh, okay. Final question, looking at the clock, unfortunately, will have to be, um, well, I might get one of the ones. Uh, no. Mm. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll see if we can get the Howard's question in. It strikes me if you're selling large high value items in the UK, FBM generally feels preferable. Would you agree with that? I would say so. Yes. Yes. There was somebody we were working with and they wanted to sell mobility scooters um on um through amazon and when they worked the costs out and everything else it was actually easier for them to pay for a van and have the the mobility scooter um travel by van or you know packed and whatnot um and delivered that way around through the fbm model as opposed to the fba because the fba remember these items come through the post whether they use royal mail every or whoever else they use so they have to be packaged pretty well um and they normally are Right, I've got three final. If you could answer in thirty seconds, then that, that just so that everyone's had the chance. Then, Gajinda said, "Do we have to provide professional photos and videos to Amazon of our products?" No, take them with your your, your phone. Take them with your phone. Make sure the main image has a white background. There are guidelines, so Amazon will um, accept or or uh, not accept your images. But no, you don't need professional photos. Trevor said, "Who decides on where the items are stored?" Um, Amazon do depending on the space in their warehouses. So because Amazon want to get your goods to the customer very, very quickly, they send the goods all around the country. So it's just quicker for them to get the goods to the customer. Perfect. And Owen's asked two questions. These will definitely be the last ones. Um, the first one is what happens if goods arrive damaged? Then um, if, if what tends to happen is the customer will um, obviously raise a case, will we'll let Amazon know. So Amazon will either provide a refund. You have the option of either sending the goods out again and whatnot but if they are damaged then amazon don't tend to charge for those goods um they don't charge um the fees that they would do in relation to a, the refund fee excellent and owen's other questions it's slightly long but i'll i'll, I'll praise you uh, the percentage fees are percentage fees are based on the selling price but the selling price is always shown including vat so if something is selling at 12 percent, which represents 10 pounds plus vat do amazon charge on the 12 or the 10 if that makes sense that's right. So um, the oh, we're referring to the referral fee now. I'm I'm thinking, which is also known as the selling price. Right. So so the if the referral fee is fifteen percent, fifteen point three percent, etc., then then you add your VAT on top of that. If on your listing you've got a price of eight pound ninety nine, for example, which is what you've said the customer will be paying, then obviously that is the max the customer will pay. You're not going to be you would build your costs into your retail price. Excellent. Well, thank you, Usher. Um, well, well, thank you, everyone, for your questions. I, I wonder, Usher, you could find the slide with your contact details on, because one of the questions that Trevor asked was, how do we learn more from you? And I'm sure you'll be um, delighted to share that. Um, and then uh, comments coming in from a couple of people already um, thanking us for, for the webinar. I think it's been absolutely fascinating. I think you've reassured me, really, that despite it being a, one of the biggest companies in the world, in fact, the biggest company in the world, as a small business, we can still work with you. So I think that's really good. So um, on behalf of everybody that's that's watching live or is watching this in, in the future, which sounds a bit strange to say, but you know what I mean. Um, thank you, Usha. Thank you for, for, for the work that you're doing. Thank you for the presentation that you've given. Um, everybody, please come and join us at future FSB webinars. We'd be delighted to have you with us. Go on the FSB website, look at some of the things that we've got coming up. Go on the on-demand site, see the things that we've already done in the past, that include, which will include this presentation in a couple of days' time as well. So it's been brilliant to have you all. Uh, good luck with your Amazon training and um, have a great rest of the week. So thank you all and thank you, Usher. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you, everyone.